Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of my tutorial series for Factorio. I'm Icon and today, well, we're going to set up the same thing like in the last episode, just without a belt, but with trains. Because, you see, the whole belt transportation is just uh, inferior towards rail transportation and we're going to set up a very, very simple rail system today. Really, the most simple of simple ones. It's so simple it doesn't even need rail signals or anything, so that's how simple it is. All we're going to need are train stations, a couple of rails, locomotives, and cargo wagons. That's all we're going to need. I have completed in between this and the last episode, of course, the steel factory that I've been talking about. It's a little bit out of shape because the cliff has trolled me here a little bit. And for the home base, I have decided to go for a real, for the real deal here and set up steel in a larger scale. That's two steel per second, by the way. Because I felt like I didn't want to procrastinate the whole rail business because this is a very special situation. The materials that we're needing is, are pretty far away from our starting point. I have played many maps where iron and copper weren't that far away from my starting point, but this map is really inviting us to do some rail transportation. I have set my eyes on this copper ore patch, and I want to rail that stuff over there. It's a relatively uh, short distance, but it's perfect to show you guys how you can set up a very simple rail system. Of course, we will complexify that in the course of the time because I do plan to set up something more complex down here because at the end of the day I want to get rid of these uh, belts there because they are just not as effective as the rails will be and since there's also the coal being transported here this this invites me to do something with rail signals and to show you how these work but that's another episode and the topic is deep enough to facilitate more than one episode, don't worry. Okay, what we're also going to cover in this episode is the removal of these two biter nests because we are, we might be playing in a peaceful world and I could just ignore the hell out of them. I still want to show you guys how to remove biter nests in the early stages of the game easily. All right, so for that regard, we'll pack up all the stuff we need. It's going to be mining drills, because we're going to set up a shop down there. We're packing up rails. I don't know if 500 are enough. I'll rather take a handful more of them. And we're going to set to pack up tier 2 belts. I have made these in between. They are really, really simple. They are just tier 1 belts plus iron gear wheels. I'm packing these up because these are extremely good for mining outposts so control left click that to pack up these and i'm going to explain why these are so good down there you might already uh, assume why but we'll be getting there in a moment let's stick away from the unlocking technologies all i'm going to do now is to unlock the extra projectile speed Weapon damage, lab research speed things. Uh, whenever you have time and research capacity is open, just do so. I really won't, uh, you really won't regret it. Okay, we have also the electric pulse we need, and I think we're not going to meet, need that much more right now. The only thing I'm going to pack up right away are the furnaces. So well, let's go down there, and oh yeah, you know what? We're going to do something fancy here. We're going to build ourselves a car. So, since I am producing engine units here, we can. Engine units are not craftable in your inventory. You'll have to make them in an assembler. But, ironically enough, the car is something you can assemble in your pocket. Don't ask me why, it's just how this game works. So, we have now the car, and I, I like the car in the early game. So, you just place it down like you would any building. Then, when you left-click him, you see he needs fuel. So, we're... Control left clicking the coal. This thing drives with coal, why not? And it also comes with a uh, with a mounted gun, but more about that in another occasion. We're also going to pack up some ammo because we want to kill some biters on the road. And we're also going to grab ourselves some 
Where are they? Here. Gun turrets, because these are our best friends when we want to kill stuff. I've expanded this place a little and I can only recommend you to do so as well. The starter base is where you should fetch up all the stuff that you need for expansion. Okay, pressing enter while standing next to this thing lets you go into it. And the car is a little bit weird. When you press W, you accelerate. When you press S, you decelerate. And with A and D, you just uh, steer around. You get used to it, and I personally won't say that I love it, but it's a very, very effective way, uh, means of transportation. The only problem with it is you can smack into terrain, and this damages your car. So a lot of people hate the car for being something which just destroys your your infrastructure, ramming down your power poles, your, your pipes, and whatnot. So. But I personally think, for situations like these, it's really, really good. Because it's way faster than just moving by your feet. And if you are not needing to drive through something like... Where's a forest? Do we have no forests around here? Lucky. Well, there are... Well, you see there, these are regions where the car gets less and less effective. But early on, I really like it too get yourself around so this copper patch if possible i want to get out everything out of it so i have mentioned it already in the episode with the iron patch we're going now to look in which dimension we're going to cut it up i'm going to go this dimension so i'm placing down miners now on every possible spot we're really going to uh, overdo it here and whenever you have set up something like this where these uh, exits are facing towards each other, that's where you start a new column. So these are now back to back as you see there. This is later important, you'll see why when we uh, squiggle the belts through. And I also pay attention to uh, a certain pattern you really don't need to. It's not that important. But for me it is, okay? So here you can just uh, leave it like that, because every little piece of that patch is going to be acquired by this guy. You could also place down one extra here if you'd want to. This would deplete the patch faster and also increase the output. I'm not necessarily interested in that. It's pretty much up to you how hardcore you want to do this. But make sure that your setup will deplete the entirety of the patch at the end of the day. Everything else would be pretty much a waste. So I almost feel like I have not brought enough miners. I thought 100 would be enough, but maybe I was a little bit too short on that. Okay, as you see here, we're now getting the ball rolling. And here we need yet another column. It's going to be the last one. Okay, we're we're down two mining machines. <laughs> okay. I haven't brought exactly 100, so it's a little bit up to me, uh, up to my own fault. Whatever, it's really not that important. We can't just uh, place down a new mining machine out some other day. Oh, look at that! It's actually going to cover everything. Okay. So when we go over our calculation tool now, we see that this whole place here spits out 47.5 units of copper per second. That's way more than this uh, little belt can handle. The yellow belts can handle 15 items per second, whereas the red belts can handle up to 30 items per second. And that's where things get interesting, and that's why I wanted to have these guys for a mining outpost, because it makes all way more effective. With the yellow ones, we would need to set up four different lines to move out all the ore. Well, this way we can do with two. And that's not a bad thing at all. But before we're going to uh, go for that, we're going to have to think about the fact are we going to transport that stuff and where to. We want to set up a rail uh, system now. So when you want to set up rails, you always have to think about a couple of things. Where does it start? Of course, that's the easy part here. We're going to start right there. I also have seen that there's another copper ore thingy over here. So if this thing might ever deplete, 
and there's even a uranium ore patch over here so railways are extremely good there but we're going to start here but where do we want to end that's the important question because we want to centralize or i want to centralize my smelting down here and therefore i have to think about where will i unload the ore i would be i want to start smelting my copper let's make a tack out of that copper smelting now i want to smelt my copper down below the iron so my plan is to do the the, the copper smelting over here two options now we could either ship that stuff directly over to this place or i would uh, what i would prefer is i will set up the unloading station somewhere here so this whole place has room to expand towards to what sucks in this situation is that we have lots of cliffs here making the rails a little bit uncomfortable if you personally hate cliffs and i know a lot of players who do you can also turn them off in the terrain generation of a game and generate a game entirely without cliffs so if that's really bothering you you don't need to worry about that but you will receive a technology called cliff explosives which is going to be give us the ability to remove these things okay so since we have now more or less our directions set up i'm going to connect this to power since i now know that i'm going to transport somewhere there the train station will start there so now we know how our belts will roll let's put the red belt over here into the quick bar and now we have to go over this and i want to see so this is roughly 27 ore per second so i'm going to divide this patch now in two sections so this is going to be one section and this is going to be the other section if it doesn't make sense now it'll do in a second so we're now going to connect these guys and as you see here walking against the red belt is pretty hard much harder than walking against the yellow belt so as you see here these if you connect them backwards it's it's all pretty weird so try to avoid that if possible did a whoopsie there all right so that's why i always connect them in the walking line i don't know maybe i'm just dumb and it's actually not that hard to connect them this way but i am personally quite incapable to all right so make sure that your belt runs along every single entry and exit of these mining machines and now we're going to connect them with power. Alright, and of course we're doing the same thing for the other belt system in a second too. As you see here, it's uh, pretty easy to wire it up nice and tidily with those medium power poles. Some people value nice and tidy more than others. I'm doing my best, although I'm really no expert in nice and tidy. Always does cost me too much time and effort in the long run. Okay, now we got this. And now we'll make sure that... We're going to set up the other path there too. So now we're going to connect these guys there. Wait a second, that's wrong. I always get a little bit confused with how, which direction those belts have to run. But, well, here we go. So, uh, this section now is producing 20.5 ore per second, and this section is producing 27 per second, but none of these belts is packing more than 30 ore per second, and that's what's important. We don't want to have more than 30 ore per second. So, basically, every one of these mining machines can now work non-stop and that's what we wanted to achieve now off to the railroad 
So I'm going to uh, go for this height here. I want to go I want to unload practically behind this cliff there. So let's go. I'm going to go into my car now and start from the other side because I always like to start from the more complicated side of building because this side, well, you see, it's all clear. There's no obstacles, but the other side is full of obstacles and annoying. So let's start there. And while we're at it, we're also going to smack down the biters. So to remove biter nests is a little bit more tricky. First off, make sure that you have the following things. An assault rifle, heavy armor, gun turrets, ammo. Pretty important to have these things, otherwise your adventure is going to be a short one. So we're going to do the classic, uh, classic strategy called turret creep. And the idea there is you just set up like five of your turrets, then you get some ammo. And we're going to hold down left control and right click here. Right click is quite important because this way you're uh, not giving these things the entirety of your ammo, but just a portion of that. Half the stack to be exact. And now these guys are loaded. So what we're doing next is we're going to run towards these guys and hold down the space bar and attack those fellas. And run back so our towers can do this. And now we run back to these fellas, attack the thingies a bit, and now you just uh, do the same thing. And, well, that was wrong, sorry. That's how not how to do it, sorry, sorry, sorry. And the really important part there is now that you look where, where does the green square of these guys end, and then you set up the next line of defense, and then you give them ammo again. And while you do this, these guys are getting cover from these guys, so that's where the creep is starting. And you're able to butcher down the buildings. This doesn't really uh, show in, in the peaceful mode, because you see, you're not exactly... These guys are not exactly attacking on their own volition, but I hope you get the idea. This is a pretty valid strategy, which I can't really employ here quite well. But let's see. Oh, well, well, it's working out quite okay. Uh, closer you get, the more aggressive your turrets will grow. And what's also really helpful here, to bring our repair packs. So you can repair against the damage of the worms. And by the way, the worms set down caustic spit. That'll do constant damage when you stand in it. But this way, as you see here, the critters aren't really attacking me. They're very busy with uh, attacking my turrets. Uh, that's the that's it in a nutshell. You can, of course, pull it off way, way better than me here, by all means. But uh, that's the basics, and I bet you guys can get the rest. Uh, can figure out the rest from there. If you are if you are looking for mods to make it easier, the easiest mod that there is is called Fill for Me. And what the mod does it is it it fills entities with their desired ammo, so to say. In this scenario, this would mean place down a turret and it is instantaneously loaded with clips as long as you have some in your inventory. This makes uh, it just possible to run around the biter nest and place down turrets and kill them. It's cheesy though. It takes out the uh, challenge. Later in the game we get more and more different options to kill those guys, but more about that once we get there. So I'm going to do the unloading station here, mostly because it's going to be a very short route to transport the copper ore from here to there, and also because I am already planning to make the unloading station for now here, and once we are able to remove all those cliffs, replace it. That's very important to stress out with this game, you never need to stick to something you don't like forever. 
can't just do it for a while. Okay, so we're now getting the rails and place down your first uh, first piece of rail. And now you see there's a green arrow when you hover over it. We're going to go this way because we want to go. As you see here, it's I don't even do anything. This uh, goes automatically. And once I press Q, I get out of this menu. What we're uh, going to do now first is I'm going to go this way. And I hope yeah, it works. I'm going to set up a little loop. This loop is important because that's where our train will turn. We're going to drive on in here, unload our stuff here, and then drive on by further. Although, well, stupid cliffs. Ah, well, whatever, we're going to unload it in an exotic way. It'll work out. And now we're just going to set our... Just going to do this that way. And... Walking in a straight line as long as possible is always good, but you see here we're going to we, we needed to remove something there, and now we're just moving our our character all the way over there. I'm always happy the less complicated my uh, rail can be, and here we're just going to remove those rocks. So I don't have to do unnecessary curves. So by the way, rails are composed out of rock and steel. And that's why the steel production was so necessary at the home base. Alright, carved through that. And let's just continue. And now we can already go up there. Because we're already below that thing there. And now we're just going to... As you see here, we, we can't go further here. We are crossing the power pole. So let's just press Q. And build back a couple of these guys. And now we're going to go for, for this again. And now build the loop again. So if that ever happens to you, that's a pretty, uh, pretty nasty thing, isn't it? So usually... The easiest way to fix this is to shorten your straight path a little bit. The rail system of Factorio is a little bit nasty and takes a while to be uh, to be enjoyed. The real important thing there is for these things, they need to be exactly uh, uh, large enough that your train is going to be able to fit in there doesn't make sense now that's why I built them uh, crisscross there this is by the way pretty small too small for my taste so let's try to make that a little bit larger now that's where I have to sadly inform you that it's always a little bit of fidgeting inside included okay so but you get used to the more often you do it, the more easy it gets. So, pick up the train stop. When we pick up the train stop, we see here where the train... The green dots show where you can place it down. And the white squares you, you see here are showing you where the, the train would park if it would hold at that train station. We're going to set up the trains like here, just like I thought. As you see here, this place, it would only accommodate, like, one wagon completely, and the next one would be already a little bit tilted. So we definitely built this loop too small, but it doesn't really matter. We can optimize later. Like I keep saying, don't grow nuts about things that you can always fix up later. So we're going to set up our train station here. So, as you see here, we have now these squares there and now we're going to get into our inventory i have one locomotive on my in my pocket and we're going to set it down here inside the first square and we're also going to pick up the freight wagons the cargo wagons and place them now right next to that by the way you can totally ignore that loop if you just place down a locomotive at the front and the end of that thing 
and there's a lot of fun you can have with locomotives in this game. Among those fun things are the fact that the more locomotives you pack onto the train, the faster it goes, lots of things. What's really important is, you see here already, the locomotive needs fuel, and we're going to give it some coal, and you see there, there's the usual suspects. We're going to slap in the wood that we got there. It's a real grateful end recipient for, for stuff that you don't need anymore. And now we're going to see what we can do. So, train loading. Our next goal is to make sure that the ores go into those wagons. Here it is a little bit uncomfortable that we got two tracks and three wagons so it's going to be really difficult to make it even so so we have to figure out something but first let's uh whip it down there and so for our wagons, we're going to put down, first off, fast inserters headed towards the wagon. And as you see here, every wagon can pack up six inserters. And then we're going to set up a set of containers. And then we're going to set up another set of uh, contain another set of inserters grabbing something. And that's going to be our standard there. And here in this situation i'm a little bit uh i'm a little bit torn how to do this because in every scenario this will be a little bit uh crappy you see okay well, let's give it a little bit of power so ideally i would want to have a better belt system so I could transport more ore at once ideally I would I would want a blue belt which is able to transport 45 items per second that would be the ideal solution but this is something about Factorio you or you already uh, might have noticed you can't settle always with you can't always uh, wait for ideal often you have to make decisions that are just uh, little bit of a downsizing so here we're just going to make it work for now and think about the solution later so what's happening now here is this thing here is now getting filled with copper ore and as you see there every wagon here has a lot of storage spots and these chests have even more so this way we can totally get ourselves a large quantity over there. So when we get click now the, the train, the train can be driven manual or automatic. We're going to go into manual control now because we want to set up a station on the other side of this. So press enter and just uh, to. oddly enough, this uh, is uh, this train is driving backwards. Oh god, I'm so stupid. Well, it doesn't really matter if uh, you're driving forward or backward, though, as long as you're moving into the correct direction. So, now you're... It's, uh, I'm controlling this, by the way, but it's just W and S, so, just so you know. We're going to do... We're going to fix this, of course, quite easily. So, we're going to take the locomotive there and uh, <laughs> slap it onto the correct side there. That's all we need to do, I think. All right. And now we can just uh, drive it along there another time. So, you can drive your locomotives like that. And if you've made everything correctly, you can just drive in cycles. So, I'll show you. So, as you see there everything working out just fine this does although mean that i eventually need to rebuild my uh my train stop so as you see here everything working out just nicely now we're driving back and now i want to set up the unloading station 
So get back to the train stop thing. And now we'll have to... We're going to settle for this one. Alright. Used. Ah, here. I just can't press R. Sorry, guys. It's the first time that I have a locomotive facing the wrong side. You always learn something new. All right, now we don't need to do anything, as you see here. You can slap them on the front side, you can slap them on the back side, whatever, it, they do work out. So we're going to check this one here. So you see, this is the menu for your train stop. So that, since it ain't connected to anything, it's not doing uh, anything. So let's get on up to the automatics and we're going to add stations. We're going to add the station Adam Lawless and we're going to add the station Ketsumbra. So these are the two stations that we're going to use for this one. So here you see there are conditions. So our condition here is we want full cargo off. Wait a sec. So. Yeah, full cargo works out. I was just wanting to define it more for something specifically. I was uh, actually thinking you could define some specific item, but it doesn't matter. This uh, setting says this train will drive on when it's full cargo here, and the other uh, condition there is empty cargo inventory. So we can now tell them to drive there. And uh, there we go setting these up like that and now we're just doing the same thing as we did on the other side we're setting up the unloaders there let's see i don't have enough chests you always end up with something you don't have enough of and now we're just going to do the same thing over here and what we get with this is a steady throughput of 30 copper ore that we can use to our own liking. So, where's the next power cord? Pretty far away, actually. So, I'll set that up in a second so we can watch it in motion. All right, so I have wired up everything that like we're going to need it. And now it's looking like that. We got these chests there. I have not put them on power on purpose. And as you see here, we are right now suffering a little bit from a shortage of material. But as soon as this thing here, see, full cargo inventory, is green, it's going to drive over to Katsumbra. So we're going to shorten this by just clicking there. And you see, you can also, auto, you can also force uh, the train to drive along. By the way, this is just the configuration for one train. We can do this with several trains and now it's going to park down over here. Let's finally power up those poor fellas. And as you see here, the only thing that's missing now is one connector for the locomotive providing it with coal or any other fuel because that's one thing that we're going to have trouble with and as you see here empty cargo inventory let's see i really hope that we're going to be able to see this at least once in action and then stuff is working out just as we see it as we want it to see things that i can't add up here first off there are better inserters there are filter and there are stack inserters that you can research stack inserters move an entire stack out of an, a, an inventory so they can move up to 50 uh, pieces of ore per unit and that really does make a lot of a difference and as you see here our unloading here is also not ideal you can do a lot of uh, cool tricks with that by doing different uh, by, by patching them up like uh, let's see like this for example where you just uh, let them roll together like that 
looking a little bit weird at first. There are several ways how you can do it though. This is just to make sure that our um, dudes are getting the job done more easily. As you see here now, the thing is empty and it's uh, riding along. And Find your own solutions for the problem, of course. I'm just giving you a little bit of a uh, template there. Because this is the most, most, most basic way how to do it. And here, for example, we definitely want to connect this belt with this belt. So it's going to be fuller than that. And there's plenty to optimize. But what's important is we have a fully automated little grid that transports all the copper ore we want over there without us needing to whip thousands of belts through that. We can easily upgrade the power of this one by just adding up another par a few parts over here. And this will go in, going, this is going to be very, very good for us. So between the episodes, I'm going to set up the copper smelting thing there. Something similar like that, only in maximum scaling, mostly because it's just flat out boring to watch me build that. And we're going to talk about other things in the next episode. So I'm not sure if we're going to go for more complex railing anytime too soon. I'll see about that. I'm not too sure if it's that necessary right now. But thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to have on some other really cool topic in the next episode. I'm really down to start with the science pretty soon. But I'll let you know what's going to be the case. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. And consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you. See you next time. And have a good one. Bye-bye.